Today, the third Sunday of Lent, Holy Mass, is offered for the intentions of the people of our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have graced in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, is it Mary of a virgin? All the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for you. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have showed us the remedies for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was looking after the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, priest of Midian. He led his flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the shape of a flame of fire coming from the middle of a bush. Moses looked. There was the bush blazing, but it was not being burnt up. I must go and look at this strange sight, Moses said, and see why the bush is not burnt. Now the Lord saw him go forward to look, and God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, he said. Here I am, he answered. Come no nearer, he said. Take off your shoes, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, he said, the God of Abraham the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this Moses covered his face, afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have seen the miserable state of my people in Egypt. I have heard their appeal to be free of their slave drivers. Yes, I am well aware of their sufferings. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land to a land rich and broad, a land where milk and honey flow. Then Moses said to God, I am to go then to the sons of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. But if they ask me what his name is, what am I to tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is that, he added, is what you must say to the sons of Israel. The, God, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name for all time. 
By this name I shall be invoked for all generations to come. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I want to remind you, brothers, how our fathers were all guided by a cloud above them and how they all passed through the sea. They were all baptised into Moses in this cloud and in this sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, since they all drank from the spiritual rock that followed them as they went and that rock was Christ. In spite of this, most of them failed to please God, and their corpses littered the desert. These things all happened as warnings for us, not to have the wicked lusts for forbidden things that they had. You must never complain. Some of them did, and they were killed by the destroyer. All this happened to them as a warning, and it was written down to be a lesson for us who are living at the end of the age. The man who thinks he is safe must be careful that he does not fall. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, 
Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. On those 18 on whom the tower at Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here, for three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, Leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. I have actually seen with my own eyes the shrub that purports to be the burning bush. When I was in Egypt over a decade ago, one of the places I managed to visit was Mount Sinai, where there's now an Orthodox monastery. And I remember that we were shown a large tree, which according to local legend, is a direct descendant of the Old Testament burning bush from which God spoke to Moses. The actual bush is the Rubus Sanctus Bramble, which is endemic to the Sinai Peninsula. It's a large thorn bush, and I've got evidence of that since, despite notices telling tourists not to pluck the leaves, I thought I ought to liberate one and destroyed a perfectly good pullover in the process. Trees are symbols of life in the Bible and they're often used as a means of telling us something about God's life and how we receive that life. Moses had a mission to make the people, the God of the people of Israel known and every single person in God's plan has a mission to be a channel of God's divine grace to the world. Planted in God like a tree or a vine, we're meant to bring forth the fruits of love, peace, joy, compassion, non-violence. Now, this should, of course, be effortless because the closer we become to God, the more alive we become. According to that famous adage of St. Irenaeus, the glory of God is a person fully alive. The mystery of evil is that we resist the inclusion of God. We prefer our own way. We cling to our own prerogatives, our own ideas of freedom. And from Adam and Eve onwards, the basic thought has been, it's my life on my terms. But the result of this kind of thinking is, life Lessness. That's the importance of the image of the fruitless fig tree. The result of this lack of fruit is depression, with life going nowhere. Or in the language of Dante, to be lost and alone in a dark wood. That's the tree that bears no fruit. Jeremiah the prophet says that the sinner is like a tree that's planted in the desert, dried up and parched. The owner of the tree says that if there's no fruit, it will be cut down. And this is the note of urgency. 
The note of urgency that is struck over and over again in the Bible. Now, it's hard to say, and it's harder still to take in. But we really can run out of time. We can become so resistant to God's grace that the leaves of our life dry up. It's a simple spiritual physics, really. And the question that's being asked of me is, am I like that fig tree? Am I consistently a radiant sign of God's life in the world? If the answer to that is yes, then great. Then we've allowed God to invade us. But if not, then it's time to change. And that is where Lent comes in, because it's giving us the annual opportunity to change, to repent, and to seek the mercy of God. I want to say something briefly about the beautiful sacrament of confession, reconciliation, because it's one of the ways that we wake up to that urgent call made to us at this time. And in government speak, I need to level up with you about the widespread neglect of this sacrament amongst the majority of us Catholics. Why are we not going to confession? Pope Francis talks about it all the time. He said recently, each one of us should ask ourselves, when was the last time I went to confession? And if it's been a long time, do not lose another day. Jesus is there. Be courageous. Go to confession. Pope Emeritus Benedict called the crisis we're experiencing in the church at the moment the crisis of confession. And he wrote to all of us priests when he was Pope, asking us to rediscover and to help others discover the sacrament of reconciliation. It's a sacrament we need to use and to cherish. It exists to help us become the children of God that we're meant to be and to let go of all the rubbish and the baggage that we carry around, all those sins that Christ died for. I remember a therapist telling me some years ago the story of one of their patients who'd been in a terrible state of depression and self-disgust ever since the time they left school. Nothing seemed to help them. And then one day this therapist met the patient in front of a Catholic church and they went inside because it was raining and they saw people going to confession. The patient, who was a Catholic, said to the therapist, do you think I should give it a go? And the reply was, no, don't bother with that. But the patient went anyway and emerged from the confessional with his first smile in years and then kept on improving as the weeks and the months went by. This therapist now encourages all of her Catholic patients to go to confession because sin leads to sadness and glumness and all the addictions that we so cling to in our lives because it's a violation of God's love. It's a violation of the purpose that's built into our very being by God. And so confession lifts the guilt and anxiety that causes us to sin and heals us. Actually, millions, you know, millions of pounds are spent on therapy in this country every year. Therapy that can never take away the guilt of sin. Only God can do that and does that in this sacrament of confession. God wants to heal us. He wants to make us whole. How can we say no to this? How can we stay away from it? The sacrament of confession is God's life and love coming into the deepest fibre of our being. We're not the sum of our sins. We make this mistake sometimes, you know. We do something wrong, we sin, we think that's who I am. But God says no. That's not who you are. You're beautiful. You're a child of God. 
And he wants that beauty to be restored and then for you to go on and to bear fruit. The bottom line is, God is not to be feared. The God of the burning bush is the God who wants us to be fully alive. And fully alive in God means that we produce the fruits of a good tree with no fear of it ever withering, no fear of it ever being cut down. With Mary's prayers and with her daily help and aided by the sacrament of confession, we can. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now I'm prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us call on God the Father in the name of his Son, who saves his people from their sins. That we would resist all temptations to condemn others and never take pleasure in the sins of another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace in our world at this time, that the suffering people of Ukraine may be given fortitude and their aggressors receive the grace of conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who at Easter will be reborn in baptism and those to be received into the church, may they learn to sing the praises of God who works marvels. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died recently, Tom O'Callaghan, and for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time, May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us now turn to Our Lady, Queen of Peace, and pray. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. And to me, most precious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. In silence, let us tell our good Father God of any special needs. Merciful Father, hear our prayers. Guide us in your peace that we may serve you in tranquility and joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by your gracious gifts each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent upon prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said, the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Lord, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Show each other a sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery it may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The notices for the week on the Fridays of Lent, there's the Way of the Cross and Benediction at 7 p.m. If you're interested in participating in the pilgrimage to Lourdes at the end of July, then please find the details in the newsletter and you might please be good enough to register your interest in this via the parish office as soon as possible. If you make your weekly offerings to the parish using the gift aid envelopes, then the new boxes are available for collection at the back of the church from this weekend. Please continue to donate generously to the humanitarian aid for Ukraine via the Aid to the Church in Need website or the Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral in London and links to both of these ways of giving can be found in the newsletter this week and also on the parish website. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.